What's up, football fans, and welcome back to another Fans First Football Show. I am your host, Jeff Hartman, and Rob Statsgrove is not joining me today. Instead, we have the unbelievable Hondo Carpenter joining us. Hondo not only covers the Raiders for us at Fans First Sports Network, but was also at the Super Bowl covering it for the NFL. Hondo, welcome to the show. How are you? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. Early morning here in Vegas, and I want to give a shout out to everybody around me who here at the airport who said, go ahead, do the interview. So I apologize to them having to put up with this, but hey, it's good to be here and long night, late night. I bet. I bet. So what was your knee jerk reaction of the Super Bowl, Honda? Like when you were there, you're watching it. It was a phenomenal game, phenomenal finish in overtime, 25-22. Chiefs win. What was your knee jerk reaction? A couple of things stood out to me. I don't think that the Chiefs won it. I think the 49ers lost it. And uh, listen, we're not taking away a Super Bowl. I mean, hey, I'd rather my team, you know, win one that was given to them than lose one that they played better. And I'm not minimizing the Chiefs, but that was a big thing that stood out to me. But the other thing is, is champions know how to win. And you could tell early when San Francisco had momentum, they were playing better, but didn't put their foot on the throat of Kansas City. You could just tell there was that feeling that, okay, here we go. Kansas City's going to find a way. He's the best quarterback in the National Football League and Patrick Mahomes, him and Andy Reid did their magic. I thought it was ridiculous the way Travis Kelsey behaved like a moron again. You know, the way he treated Andy Reid was ridiculous. We saw that on Christmas Day when he threw his helmet in disgust. And, but overall, champions are champions. Andy Reid's the best coach in the National Football League for a reason. And the Chiefs hoist another trophy. I want to get your take on just the overall approach to overtime. So the overtime, we go to overtime. We all know how that works, and you get to choose whether you want the football or you want to kick it off. Clearly, the San Francisco 49ers took the possession. What's your thoughts on that? Because there's some people that say that they should have said, hey, we want the Chiefs to have the ball first. We're going to get a possession no matter what. What's your take on that overall decision? First of all, I think anybody that says that should shut their mouth because they're proving they're ignorant and don't know the game. <laughs> because they're not going to automatically get another possession if Kansas City scores a touchdown. And right then, at that point, they had the momentum. Kyle Shanahan did the absolute right thing. Now, I would have went for it, you know, inside the 10-yard line on fourth down because everybody in that building knew and all of the 200 million people watching by television, Kansas City was going to score. That's where you have to just have that killer instinct. Football is not soccer. It's yeah. not you know, gymnastics, it's a violent testosterone filled game. It's why we love it. And certain parts of our society hate it. And yeah. you've got to go out, put your foot on someone's throat and just crack it. And when you're Kyle Shanahan, you don't give the ball back to the best quarterback in the national football league and say, go score a touchdown. That was the biggest mistake of the game. I mean, by Shanahan, I don't think he had any, his team didn't play well, but his game plan was great. If I'm there, I'm going for it saying, Hey, it's a super bowl. Let's go. Listen, my wife, I'm married out of my league. She's gorgeous. She was the cheerleader. I was just a big, ugly lineman. But I, I, I eventually pursued her and won her heart. And at that point, you're playing for a Super Bowl. All bets are off. Go for it. Let's go. Just line up behind Trent Williams and pound somebody in the face. Yeah. And they, they did get away from the running game, and they were breaking off runs at probably six to seven yards a clip with Christian McCaffrey, and they were finding unique ways of running the football, and it did seem like they got away from it. Brock Purdy, though, I want to get your take on him because everyone's going to always compare him. You know, the quarterback comparison between he and Patrick Mahomes, clearly as a seventh-round draft pick, second-year player, he didn't play poorly. What was your take on Brock Purdy's game? I thought Brock Purdy played very well. He did what was asked of him. Again, the people making the comparisons to Patrick Mahomes are morons. He's a, he's a Mr. Irrelevant in his second year or whatever. Mahomes wasn't Mahomes his first year. And, I mean, I, I they're, plus they're two different quarterbacks. One's a shortstop. One's a game manager. And I think that, you know, a lot of times everyone wants to know, is this the next greatest? Is this the next whatever? There's never going to be another Tom Brady. There's never going to be another Patrick Mahomes. All Brock Purdy needs to be is Brock Purdy, and I think he did a good job of being that. They didn't lose that game last night because of Brock Purdy. Yeah. And so you bring up Tom Brady, and it was something I wanted to ask you about because it seemed like in today's parody-driven National Football League, dynasties are a dying thing, yet here we have the Kansas City Chiefs, and they are they are the most consistent product. And I think most would agree that the Chiefs this year, this was a down year for them, and yet they still find a way – to win the Super Bowl. They didn't have a star-studded cast. You really just on offense had Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. 
What's your take on the Chiefs organization, the, the sustainability that they've had and the success they've had in recent years? First of all, to quote the prophet Ric Flair, to be the man, you got to beat the man. So they're going to be the favorite next year, and they should be. But you saw some cracks in the armor. They didn't play as well this year. You saw Travis Kelsey. You know, Tom Izzo, the Hall of Fame basketball coach at Michigan State, once told me something. The hardest part about winning <clears throat> is then you have to win again. And once you reach the mountaintop, guys <clears throat> like to cut corners. Now, nobody's been to more Final Fours, including Coach Krzyzewski in his career, than Tom Izzo. And so he's proven his ability. But the, the thing that sticks out to me is that you saw Travis Kelsey act in the fool when the pressure was on. I think anytime you got Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes, you're going to be in a great spot. It's going to be interesting, though, watching the ancillary cast around them and how they act. Denver is going to be a couple years away. Jim Harbaugh steps into a, you know, he's a great coach with the Chargers, but then you're going to turn around. They're 40 million over the cap. The Raiders are coming with Antonio Pierce. So there's going to be some competition and there's teams on the rise. So I think it's going to be interesting. That's going to be the storyline when I write my article going in next year for Sports Illustrated is can the Chiefs do it again? Because they're not just playing everyone else now. They're playing themselves and expectations. And man, like I told somebody one time, you know who the, the, the greatest man to ever walked the earth was? The guy your wife dated before you married her. And I'm going to tell you, it's the same thing. The, the Chiefs are going to play 31 other teams, and they're going to play the Chiefs next year. That's going to be fascinating to watch. If any coach can do it, it's Andy Reid. But it's the people around him, the players around him. You know, what happens with Kelsey continues to get all the stress when things don't go well. He clearly didn't handle it well yesterday. And uh, it's going to be interesting to watch how the other players do. So I, I want to ask about the MVP. Obviously, Patrick Mahomes gets the most <clears throat> valuable player. Do you think they got it right in, in that selection? Yeah, I think, you know, Patrick got it right. I voted for Patrick. You know, he's the Super Bowl winning quarterback, and it wasn't like anyone else yeah. um, played much better. So you're going to give it to him, and you should. He's a great kid. After the game, he was just uh, typical Patrick, very kind, very – he's a champion, and, and, and I got so much respect for him. I want to go back to something you said about the 49ers. You said, you know, they lost the game and it wasn't that the chiefs necessarily won it. And I, th I think that's, I want to dive into that a little bit more, but if there was one big thing that Kyle Shanahan did, or maybe it was defensively that they did, what was the takeaway that you thought, man, they're really letting this get away. They just kept making stupid penalties, turnovers, unforced errors, pre-snap mistakes. You, the NFL has so much parody that you can't afford to go have to beat another team and beat yourselves. And last night was really a case of which team made the least mistakes at the right time. And that was Kansas city. I, listen, I was there. I was down in the locker room, down on the field. <clears throat> I've watched both these teams up close this year. Um, I had no doubt the most talented team was San Francisco, but I'll tell you a great story. You're too young to remember this. So go do your Netflix or however you get your movies. John Wayne did a movie once called the Cowboys and in the movie he's leading a bunch of young kids on a cattle drive because all the adults are up trying to look for gold and he shows these two bulls fighting and he says listen that first bull is younger stronger but he's going to lose because he doesn't know how to fight yesterday you saw a seasoned champion hold off a stronger better probably tougher team in San Francisco because they knew how to win Kansas City you know collapsed I mean the San Francisco collapsed a little bit and that's how it happened. So you you talked about the Chiefs and the challenges that they have coming up, and especially within the AFC West and all that. I want to go to the other side and take a look, an early look at, well, well Brock Purdy is on a rookie deal, so they're still going to be do – you, do you, let, me, let me rephrase this. Do you think the 49ers aren't going anywhere? Do you think they're still going to be the powerhouse in the NFC, or do you think they might fall off a little bit? You know, I'll tell you a great story. Don Shula once talked to me about the dangers of overreaction. If I'm San Francisco's John Lynch and you know the general manager, I'm sitting there thinking, look at everything Brock Purdy did right. Yeah. And he's on a rookie deal. I'm going to have to get rid of some of my stars that got me here if I get rid of them. I'm riding the Brock Purdy train. I, they didn't lose that game because of Brock Purdy. Now, a lot of their fans are going to clamor and want somebody else. And I can understand if they can go get a Kirk Cousins, which is a definite possibility. Mm. But at the at the end of the day, I think you ride Brock Purdy and come back. Let your team learn how to win. I'm going to make this prediction right now. If they don't mess with Purdy and keep this team intact, 
I think San Francisco is going to be right back here next year. Well, it's, it's, in New Orleans. Yeah. Right. No, I, I understand what you mean. It's really going to be interesting because – I agree with you. They did not lose because of Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy, did he win them the game? Obviously, he didn't, but he did not lose them the game. It was not Brock Purdy that was the, you know, the, the bane of their existence, so to speak, in the Super Bowl and in the biggest moment. They just got beat by, like you said, the seasoned veteran team. And when you look at the statistics, they were really, really even across the board outside of total yards, where the Chiefs outgained the 49ers 455 to 382. They both had two, uh, two turnovers. The, the penalties were even six apiece. But I guess I want to ask you just from a, a holistic perspective, the NFL product, the Super Bowl in and of itself, how would you rate it on a scale from one to 10? 10 being this was a phenomenal product. This is what the NFL wants. One being this was an awful game and not a very good display. Where would you rank this game? I'd put it as a six. You know, okay. I've been to a ton of Super Bowls. Yeah. I'd put it as a six. You, you want your best teams playing mistake-free football at this level. And luckily, we had an extra 100 million viewers who were just turning in to see Taylor Swift. But at the end of the day, I think you wanted to see your best teams play their best football. And I don't think you saw that from either team. What's your take on the Taylor Swift while you brought it up? I wasn't going to bring it up, but you brought it up. Well, here's the whole deal. I'm a football purist, but I don't care who Travis Kelsey dates. I'm not a big fan of her music, but guess what I am a fan of? I'm a journalist, and she brought hundreds of millions of new fans. And guess what they do every time I mention her? Click, 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 click. <laughs> and I can tell you, my story this morning had her on the cover because uh, I did a story about NFL players yesterday after the game calling the, the NFL rigged, or actually they called it fixed and fake. Yeah. So uh, I thought that was fascinating. And Roger Goodell had talked earlier in the week about it. And um, But you know what? She brings a whole new generation of fans now. She's a 35-year-old woman, 33-year-old woman, writing songs about all of her breakups, you know, like she's a 17-year-old. So how long will those fans stay when she dumps him or he dumps her? But she's bringing new eyes to it, and I think it's fun. I got to tell you, last night at the game, I'm walking in, and a lady comes over and takes a picture with me, and she said, back of her jersey said, Taylor's boyfriend, and it was a Kansas City Chiefs jersey. And I took a picture of it and texted it, and I sent it to Jason Kelsey. And uh, but very fascinating, very interesting time. She brought a whole new set of fans in. Absolutely. A couple only a couple more questions. I know you're at the airport and I don't want to keep you too long. As someone that's at the Super Bowl, what do you think? Uh, give people an idea of what it's like, like the environment of being at the Super Bowl. Like, well, I've never been to one, most of us will never in our lifetimes. You've been to several. What's it like actually being at the actual Super Bowl? You know, I'll tell you, it's nothing like people think. It's not a regular football game. <clears throat> Each team has about 7,500 fans from their tickets, which a lot of those go to family or whatever. A lot of players sell their tickets um, to their foundations. It's a very corporate event. I'm sitting next to a gentleman who was there last night. He was a Baltimore Raven fan. He was here with some guys from work. It's a very corporate event. You know, all of a sudden, Two-minute commercial breaks are seven. I mean, dear Lord, there was enough time for my wife to get up and go to the bathroom if she'd been in the building on commercial breaks. And my wife does not do that quick. That's a minimum 20 minutes. You got a 10-minute halftime in a regular game. It's a 50-minute halftime. Um, it, again, it just it, it goes on and on. At home, you've got your own food. You've got your own drinks. You've got your friends. You've got the commercials. <clears throat> None of that's going on at the game. Very corporate. I told people all the time, if I didn't get paid to go to the Super Bowls every year, I wouldn't go. <laughs> That's interesting. I've heard, I've actually heard that from multiple people that said it's not what it's cracked up to be. Everyone thinks it's, it's this wonderful spectacle, which it is, but at the same time, it's not really the best product. Now, I, last question, Honda, before I let you go, and that is, I hate to do this to you, but I'm going to do it anyways. Look into your crystal ball and predict who's going to be playing next year in New Orleans in the Super Bowl. Well, you know, it's funny. I predicted San Francisco and Kansas City this year, and I predicted Kansas City to win. So I guess even a clock without go. a battery is right twice a day. Um, I'm going to stick on Kansas City until they lose. Um, I think there's a lot of teams that are going to pressure them. But uh, I think that's going to be, you know, very fascinating to watch. And then I'm going to say, you know, coming out of the NFC, that, that to me is what's going to be fascinating. I don't know yet. A um, couple of things I'm aware of that I can't talk about that I'm going to wait and see. But I'm going to tell everybody this. I talked earlier about teams learning to win. Keep your eye on Lamar Jackson. 
John Harbaugh's a great coach. That's a great team. I think they could be contenders. There's going to be a few. I think San Francisco could be right back here if they stick with Brock Purdy. And uh, obviously, I'm just throwing in Baltimore as a, as a team that could be a potential contender. But there's, I think there's a handful of five teams. I had a general manager tell me this before. There are eight teams in the NFL that think their quarterback can win them a Super Bowl. There are eight that hope, and then there are 16 that know, wake up every day knowing we're screwed. So there's just a handful of teams that can do it. It's just a matter of, you know, watching how some free agencies, some drafts, and some how some things uh, uh, set out. You ask me that in a couple of weeks, I'll have an NFC contender for you, though. I absolutely will do that. Hondo, I appreciate your time. I want to give you an opportunity to plug what you're doing for us at Fans First Sports Network at the Las Vegas Raiders Insider Podcast, as well as what you're, what you're doing for Sports Illustrated. Go ahead and do that now. <clears throat> yeah, you can follow me on Instagram, which just started a couple of weeks ago. Um, at Hondo SR on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Hondo Carpenter. We're there. We're at everything on it. I'm going right now to go start reviewing players for the uh, draft. So we're headed out on our way Love up an item. So thanks for having me. No problem, Hondo. Hey, take it easy. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Big shout out again to the guys around me here at the airport tolerating this. Thank you. <laughs>